Hello everyone and thank you for checking out part 4 of the Full Stack Apollo GraphQL with React and Node tutorial. In the last part we created our Quake API and we hooked it up to our Apollo server. And once we did that we were able to use GraphQL Playground to run a query that allowed us to get a list of earthquakes. Remember, we got our earthquake data from the Earthquake Catalog uh, API at the U.S. Geological Survey. And once we got that data, we processed it and uh, turned it into some more of a uh, scaled-down, customized response. And today we're going to create a user API. And that's going to allow us to eventually, in our, say, GraphQL Playground, run a query uh, to find a list of users in the database. So for now, go to Apollo Docs, and we're still working in part two, which is called Hook Up Your Data Sources, and go down to the section called Connected Database. And it says here, we've already built a user API data source for you. Now, if you're wondering where that is, that's in the Apollo Full Stack Tutorial uh, repository at GitHub, and you can go there and you can clone the repository and get the code that way, or you can just uh, copy it from the uh, GitHub uh, file pages. But for now, go into your project, go into your server folder, and create a file called user.js. Right, and I've already included the skeleton code here. But if you'd like, uh, remember I keep for each of these, for each part of the tutorial, uh, a web page where you can say, for example, go and get the code you are interested in using and just copy it and then paste it into your file. So if you do that, you'll see that we need a package here called Apollo Data Source. Recall from our Quake API, we used a package called Apollo Data Source REST. And that had something like a built in AP, a fetch API that allowed us to make that call to uh, the uh, USGS earthquake catalog. But with the Apollo data source package, we can create a more um, scaled down, customized data source. So go ahead and add that package now. I've already done it. Let's do it again. And of course, once you add it, you bring it into your file. Now you can see that when we define our class, our user API class, we pass into the constructor a parameter of store. And what that store is, is where we're going to keep copies of our important data sets. For example, if we have a list of users in the database and we want to create either a complete copy of that list of users or sort of a scaled down uh, list of users from the database, we can do that and we can keep it in store. That way we won't be actually accessing the database directly from the user API. But right now we don't have a database and we don't even have any idea about the users that we're going to put in our database. So rather than using something like MongoDB or an SQL database, I like to just create a mock database and keep everything as self-contained as possible. So first, go into your server folder and create a file called db.js. Okay, and you can create your own list of users for this database if you like. Just remember that you have a user type that you defined in your schema and you have to make sure that your records conform to this user to this type definition. But like I told you, I have um, a lot of this code already here on the uh, the tutorial, um, the page of, <clears throat> sorry, the web page is associated with this part of the tutorial. So you can just go in there and use my code if you like. Paste that into your db.js file. So I've got three users in my database so far, and for each user, uh, according to my schema, my user type definition, I've included the ID, the user ID, the user name, the user email, the user password, which we won't be returning uh, in our responses, 
And for each user, you could, uh, like for example, each user has a list of records attached to his or her profile, and that list of records just has, uh, it's an array of e event objects that have information about the earthquakes that are particularly interesting to that user. So our first user has four earthquake events in his record, or his set of records. Our second user only has one and our third user has nothing saved. No no earthquakes that were particularly interesting to him. Okay, so now we need to create our store. Go into your server folder one more time and create a file called utils.js. Okay, and of course we're going to bring in our database. Right, we'll want to export our create store method that we're going to define now to our user API. Actually, we'll export it to our index.js file where we'll pass in the store parameter to our user API there. So for now, just module.exports. Module and we may at one point export several methods, but for now the only method we're going to export is called create store. Right, and all we're going to do is create a list of users that we make up from our list of users in the database. And for now I'm just going to return the entire list as it is. So you end up, you may end up saving several uh, data sets to your store and re returning all of them. But for now, we're only returning one in our return object. And that is the users list, the users data set. Okay, so now go back to your user.js file. After we initialize our store here, you can see that there's a built-in method in the uh, data source package called initialize and the comments that the people at Apollo have added say this is a function that gets called by Apollo server when being set up. This function gets called with the data source config including things like caches and context. We'll assign this dot context to the request context here so we can know about the user making requests. So for example if you want to check and see if the uh, user has a valid token or not uh, that'll be that information will be stored in context. But for now, let's just define a method that will get the list of users from a store from our store. So we'll call that function get users. Again, we'll call our list users. And we'll just get it from the store. So we'll say this dot store dot users and not the database itself, not directly from the database. And we'll return that list. Okay. So at some point when we write our resolver, we'll have to include this, a call to this function. But for now, let's go to our index.js file. All right, and we'll have to bring in our user API. That's in our data sources folder. Okay. But also we'll have to bring in the create store method, All right? From our utils.js folder or file. Also, we'll need to create an instance of our create store object because that's what we're going to pass into our user API. So we'll call that store.
Sorry, I said we, we'll have to create an instance of it. That was probably the wrong way to say it. But we'll basically store the create store function to a variable called store. And then we'll pass it in to our Apollo server. So here we'll create a new instance of our user API. And we'll pass into it our store. Okay, so our index.js file should be good to go for now. But let's have a look at our schema. So go back to our schema and look at our query type. We've defined a Quakes query and we've defined an individual Quake query, but we don't have a user's query. So we'll have to define that here. And we want it to return a list of users. And that's it. Also, you'll have to go to your resolvers folder and you'll have to make a resolver for users. We'll call that users. Right, we won't pass any arguments into it. For our context, we'll pass in the data sources. from our data sources we'll access the user API and the method that we define called get users. I right, recall in our user.js folder we define the method as get users and that's what we access here. All right so we set up our schema we added the users um, query to our schema and we've added the users resolver to our resolvers uh, file. So we should be able to run our server and query the users that are in the database by querying or by getting the information from the store. So let's run our server. Hopefully we don't have any errors. Doesn't look like we do. Bring up the playground. Okay. Remember, this is the playground is pretty nice in that, you know, if you type in something like Q to look for a query, it'll just give you the option to bring that in. Open up a set of curly braces, and if you want to know what queries are available to you, you just hit control space, and you see that we have quakes, quake, and users. So let's type in users. Now, if I were just to run this, I would get an error, right? and I would say that you have to have a selection of, sub, of subfields for your users, right? That means with each user, there are several properties attached. Control space brings up ID. Control space brings up username. Control space brings up email. Control space brings up, it brings up password. We're not gonna return the password, but we will return that list of records, right? At this point, if we try to run it, we're gonna get an error again, and you can probably guess why. I'll give you about three seconds to think about it. Right, so our list of records for each quake in the records list, you have to have that selection of subfields, right? So again, open up a set of curly braces and remember, control space, there's a quake ID, a quake location, a quake magnitude, and information on when it happened, and of course, that timestamp that we created for cursor-based pagination, which we're going to get into in the next part. So now we should be good. If we run our query, we see that we get a list of users from the database, right? And remember, we had three users in the database, and we have one, two, and three users. Good, so that's it. We're able to query the database from our proxy front end, which is uh, the GraphQL playground, and see that all of our um, users that we added are there, and we can get the data back in any shape that we want it. For example, if we don't want to return the list of records, we don't have to, right? Then we can just get this response. If we don't want to include the user ID, we don't have to do that either, and we get this response. 
So that's it. We've hooked up our user API to our GraphQL server, which is our Apollo server. And next time we're going to add pagination to our application. That way when we, we return data from the server to the client, we can actually return it in small amounts, which will uh, make our application more performant. So thank you as always for joining me and I will see you next time. Cheers.